So, ND filters, what do they do? How do you know which one to use? And which brand should you buy? You're watching Amok Time Flies, and this is the inevitable ND filter video. So in photography, there's this thing called aperture. And with most cameras and some high-end drones, you have an adjustable aperture on the lens. Now that lets in as much or as little light as you want. However, on mini drones, so like the Mini 3 Pro, the Mini 4 Pro, the Air 3, they have a fixed aperture. It lets in a lot of light. It's an f1.7. And I won't go into all of the technical details. I did that once and my retention dropped right off of the aircraft around its central axis. My brain hurts! <sighs> <laughs> But suffice it to say, the aperture on these drones is very large, and that lets in loads of light, which is brilliant because you get a lot of detail coming through. The difficulty is, though, that because it's letting in a lot of light, it brings the shutter speed right up on the drone. Now, that can give us some slightly unnatural looking video and very, very digital video. So the way we get around this is by using ND filters. Now, ND stands for neutral density, by the way. But all you need to know, and you've probably heard it before, these are sunglasses glasses for your drone and that allows you to let in less light and lower the shutter speed and therefore get more natural looking video. Now a lot of the time you'll see YouTubers that are going on about Freewell brand ND filters and that's because Freewell send out filters to be reviewed which is great. Unfortunately my channel's not big enough to be sent free filters so I've got these Skyreek filters here which I got when I bought my Mini 4 Pro, which is what you're looking at me now on. The reason I got these, they are slightly more budget friendly, but also when the Mini 4 Pro was released, I think Freewell missed the boat slightly and they were quite late getting their ND filters actually available. These ones were available immediately, so I bought them and they were about 20 quid, no, $25 less than the Freewell set. And I thought, what can be the harm in that? Let's have a look and ND filters and ND filter, isn't it? So we're going to do a little test. Now, Ted Nemeth, who is a brilliant, very creative drone YouTuber, recently put out a video saying, don't worry about using pro settings, just use your ND filters and leave the drone on its auto settings. It will take care of the exposure. But one thing that I will do, and I always do, is manually set my white balance because otherwise you get some weird sort of changes in the tone of your video if you change direction and the light changes. So we're gonna head up now to where I lost my glasses when I did my ND filter test with the Mini 3 Pro. And uh, I'm just going to program some waypoints in and fly the same waypoint mission over and over again using the Mini 4 Pro. And each time I'm going to change the ND filter. So we'll start with no ND filter and then we'll move up through the ND filters. Now this pack, this has got an ND8, ND16, ND32, ND64, and an ND128. It also has a circular polarizing filter that helps with when you're videoing and there is a lot of reflection about and also adds a little more saturation, especially to the sky, if you've got a blue sky, which I haven't. <laughs> You've probably heard of the 180 degree shutter rule, and that is where you set your shutter speed to be twice that of your frame rate. So I'm filming at 30 frames per second at the moment. If I was to use pro settings, what I would set my shutter speed as would be 60. And obviously if you're shooting at 24, 25 frames per second, you would set your shutter speed to about 50. So you can see from this demonstration here that there is no filter on the left hand side of the screen and an ND64 on the right. As you can see, there's a little bit of artifacting on the no filter side, whereas the ND64 side looks a lot more natural. By the way, if you're finding this video useful or interesting, please do hit the like button. It'll get the video out to more people who might find it useful as well. Also, if you're not one of the awesome people that are already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing that as well. And then you'll get to see my videos as soon as they come out. Thank you. Now, in this demonstration, we can see the differences between many of the other filters as well. 
ND32 is generally the filter that I go with, sometimes stepping up to ND64 if it's a really, really bright day. Now, I also said I'd tell you what ND filters I use when I'm filming. It is very much a case of personal preference, but the ND8 and ND16 are probably best for dawn or dusk sort of times. And if you're flying at night, then probably no filter at all. Or if you can get your hands on one, a light pollution filter might be quite useful. Then working your way up through all the filters, an ND32 is probably ideal for a fairly overcast day, but with a bit of sun there. For something where it's mainly sunny, probably 64. Where it's really bright, it's the middle of the day and you're around a lot of white sand, for example, then use a 128. If you've got any ND filters that are higher than that, those are generally used more for photography for really, really slowing the shutter speed down so you can get some nice images with some nice motion in them. But at the end of the day, a good rule of thumb is to think if you are underexposing a photograph or a video, it's a lot easier to bring out the details from that footage in post. Whereas if you overexpose, then it's a lot harder to grab the details out of them because it'll just be gone. 